Hey everyone, how you doing today? Here with another knife review and one that I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. I got this knife before it even came out and I, I just, I've loved it ever since, just have not gotten around to review it and it's been weighing on me. This is, uh, it came in from Custom Knife Factory, who's out of Russia if you're not familiar. Uh, it's called the Sukhoi and it's made by Anton Malashev. Uh, he's the same knife maker who did the more recent Garza, which is this one. Very nice. So I'm a, I'm a fan of his work. I'm a fan of pretty much everything that's been coming out of Custom Knife Factory. I like the people over there, I like the way they, they operate, I like their price points, and their products are just insane. So I just kind of threw this back in here. This is the package that everything's coming in now. Um, I was buying from them before they had these. They are just throwing them in like a some sort of a leather or, or cloth fabric wrap and just wrapping it in twine. They always had the, the certificate of authenticity. From day one they had that. And this just shows you the name, when you got it, and who makes it, and all that good stuff. And Mike, I think, signs it. Either that or the designer signs it, I'm not really sure. Anyway, I it's kind of funny. They always throw in the microfiber. Kind of funny, though. I bought this right around the same time. Or, I, I'm sorry, I got mine right around the same time some of the local distributors in the U.S., started saying we're, we're taking pre-orders and it was for like $35, $40 less which pretty much covered the shipping from Russia so I was kind of pissed about that and I think they even knocked off the price a little bit more so I, I don't know if this is just coincidence because I've gotten a lot of stuff from Custom Knife Factory and they've never sent me one of their tools but I think they realized that the timing for some people like myself is just gonna suck <laughs> so they just threw in one of their cool little tools here I like Actually, this is the first time I've even taken it out of the package. This thing's pretty cool. So, <laughs> I think I noticed that they're selling them for like 25, 35 bucks, something like that, on some of these places like, you know, Nice Center, Blade HQ, whatever. So, uh, cool little guy. Nice that they threw that in there. Um, so, basically, you know, you're always going to get this with anything that you get from them. Uh, the fabric, the certificate, and this uh, really cool pouch here, which I like. So, the knife. Oh my gosh. For a non-flipper, this is one of my favorite knives. Okay, I, I've i gotten to the point where I'm generally speaking sick of carbon fiber. Not the case here. There's a lot going on here, and I don't know that everybody notices it. Uh, there's been a couple other really good knife reviews on this. Well, there's only been one other good knife review that I've seen that's really good. And, of course, it's done by Jim Skelton. And he covers a lot of stuff that I'm going to try. I haven't watched that video since the knife came out. So I'm going to try not to, you know, be redundant here because, you know, I, he, uh, he covers a lot. Um, but I'll just go over some of the specs first. Uh, it is overall nine and a quarter inches it's a very long knife very slender thin from the side profile from here it's a little bit more robust it's a little thicker still very comfortable supply surprisingly comfortable in the pocket I don't know if it's this teardrop shape overall that you know where the majority of the mass is around the pivot and deeper in your pocket so it just is more comfortable but it's still very comfortable in your pocket and you also have a very thick blade stock I think it's you know, 0.16 or 1.7, something like that. So anyway, the blade is 4.125 inches, made of uh, S35VN steel. You have a frame lock with the steel lock bar insert, and you have, you know, this titanium and carbon fiber, kind of that yin yang effect. And then you also have the titanium molded pocket clip, which is really nice. Titanium backspacer and titanium 
thumb stud, which can be switched over to the left side if you'd like. The pocket clip, however, cannot be switched. And, you know, it's selfish of me to say this. <laughs> Actually, no, no, it can't because it, it tapers. It, it, it has an indentation, if I could speak, that it falls into on the side. It's selfish of me, but that's how I like it because I'm a righty. If I was a lefty, I'd be like, that sucks. I'd like it to switch over to this side so I could carry it. But then again, um, I just like it when it's a cleaner, um, more custom appearance, kind of unlike the Garza, which is, I think, good. You know, they, they made it so righties and lefties can carry it. I think that's nice. But again, just for my personal taste, because I'm a righty, I like this setup here. So the Sequoia has <clears throat> these uh, pivots on both sides, and they've released on every model that Custom Knife Factory has released, they've offered customized variations. And some of them are, they're always pretty crazy, and some of them are really well done. And I like the work that they do over there. But some of the things that they did with this knife was you can, and you can buy variations like this still, um, is they'll blacken the blade. They do like an acid quench, I believe, and then they stonewash it. And they will anodize the thumb stud, they'll anodize the pivot pins, and they'll anodize the, the backspacer. You see a lot of that. And usually it's blue. So I think it's cool and everything. Normally I like having a lot of color, um, nothing over the top. I, I love accents, so it's subtle, kind of like what I just described. But I just loved the way this looks so much, I didn't want to do anything else to it. And I didn't really have any desire to go out and get those other variations. Also has a beautiful satin rub finish I mean it's it's not like that machined look satin finish like a belt sander you know where everything's completely perfectly symmetrical the the depth of the rub um, like you'll see on zero tolerance and it goes this way side to side this goes lengthwise and it's just like just as nice of a finish as you'll see on some high-end customs as far as the blade goes. It's freaking gorgeous. Okay, this thing is five point, well they're saying it's 5.3 ounces. I always like to confirm just because sometimes that's not what I get. Not that it really matters if it's a slight variance, but 5.4, okay. So little bit heavier, nothing to even, nothing anybody would ever notice, fraction of an ounce. Anyway, so those are the stats, and it's for sale when you can find it here in the States by these local distributors, five, I'm sorry, $390, okay? So 400 bucks. I got it for a little bit less, but after shipping and everything, it was right around the same, maybe a little bit more. Guys, for $400? <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is amazing. This is crazy. It is intricate. The design, the design of it is just amazing. The, I love that there's so much to it, but it's done in such a simple package. First of all, the curvature and, and the way it feels in hand is extremely comfortable. Okay. It really feels good in hand. And I have medium sized hands. I'll wear like a medium to large size glove. Um, so kind of average. So people with big hands, you still have room to work with. Okay. It is very comfortable in the hand. And it feels very secure in the hand too. Like there's a really good grip on it because of the curvature I believe here. Everything's rounded off and chamfered here on all the edges, everywhere, all the way around. Okay, so it's extremely comfortable in the hand. Very nice. Then you have this really cool milled out pattern on the titanium face. The carbon fiber is beautiful. It's not that, you know, very common square pattern. It's got a really unique, beautiful design. I love it. Feels really good. It's not quite as slick. It's a little bit more, 
it's still smooth, don't get me wrong. There's, there's not traction on it like the titanium has, but it's not, it doesn't feel like it's just got a, a clear coat finish on it. You actually feel the texture of the carbon fiber itself. It's really nice. So, it actually contours inward a little bit, almost like a hollow grind, the handle, and flares up on the sides. So, you have this nice collar around the pivot, which is just beautiful. You have this angle here, which angles back to round it off on the side. And then it actually doesn't flatten out here, it actually tapers in and, and to the left a little bit. And when it does that, it starts to flare up just a little bit and meets up with the titanium. And it's very precise fit and finish here. Obviously, there's completely separate textures between the finish of the milling on this titanium versus the carbon fiber, but there's just no gap in between the two materials. So that's done really well. And it's all, there's titanium scales, as you can see, running the full length on both sides of the handle. And then they took away some material out of the titanium scale. That's why you can see how thick it is on this side of the titanium, and then how thin, if you ignore this backspacer here, how thin it is here because it's been, that extra depth that's been taken away has been replaced and that's where the carbon fiber has been filled in and just laid on top perfectly, being held in with these, these two pins here, screws here, and then the, the pivot pin. So, one thing I don't know if anybody's noticed, and I want to point out. So, they already have um, the steel lock bar insert here. You can't really see it, which is nice. But it's back there, and I don't know if they'll be able, be able to get the lighting. Also, I love that they do these grooves here. He does that on, on both of his models, so it's real easy to get your finger in and disengage the, the lock. But... Aside from that, there's a steel insert that is actually making the contact with this nice thick blade tang. And it locks up at about 30%, which is my sweet spot. And if I push it over, it doesn't move at all. Same with the other knife here. Um, so it's really, really solid tolerances and lock up. So the lock engagement's very, very good. I can squeeze on this all I want. It's not budging, it's very nice. But what I notice is, you see how the carbon fiber hangs down a little bit, if I can capture that with this light, from the left liner, the titanium liner, the carbon fiber hangs down a little bit more. And the lock bar travels up a little bit more. That's the over travel stop. And if you push over, it's going to catch that carbon fiber, and that's the over travel stop. A lot of knives, including knives from, you know, well, actually, most manufacturers now have done away with that disc on the back, okay, which I think came from Hinderer, Rick Hinderer, I think. I don't know if it was Stride or Hinderer, but there was the over travel disc. You know, they put a screw in right there, zero tolerance, the 0562 carbon fiber, I believe, had that still. And they also are now moving over to the steel lock bar insert that they put in. It has a little tab that extends backwards that would extend past the line of the actual rest of the handle, so that way it would stop the lock bar if you push it left. It's just kind of integrated in with the steel lock bar insert, the over travel. Um, prevention is built in. So that's pretty intuitive. This doesn't have that on the steel lock bar insert. They use the entire length of this carbon fiber on this side as over travel prevention. What I'm saying is, and I don't know, maybe I have a flashlight that can capture this better. Let's see if you can see this. So what I'm trying to show you here is, uh, I think I had it better a second ago. Right here, underneath where this groove is, the, the cutout, where the liner lock bends, there is where you see the titanium 
and then there's a little gap right there and the dark spot in there that's carbon fiber which is hanging out further so there's like a a shelf here basically is what I'm trying to say so <clears throat> much like you're seeing it hang down further here it does that all the way down the whole length the carbon fiber over overhangs the whole length of this titanium lock bar so when you push this lock bar up it's not just stopping at the top here it's not just hitting the carbon fiber at the top here it's hitting the carbon fiber all the way down so they literally have a built-in they were they're so intuitive with their design that they said what we're going to do is we're going to overlap the carbon fiber scale insert or overlay if you will and we're going to design it so that way there's a relief cutout or ledge just like you see right here on the titanium that runs the whole length of the lock bar and it's going to fit perfectly up against the carbon fiber so that way the carbon fiber works to prevent over travel and the fit and finish is still beautiful lines right up with it how awesome is that and it's all hidden it's like built in you don't even know what's going on that is exceptional design and engineering fit and finish it's just got it all so yeah I'm I'm a fan obviously and anybody who knows a good knife <clears throat> is gonna be a fan too this is a huge value okay this is just, let's just round up and say it's four hundred dollars so is the Garza if I had four hundred dollars to spend I can't think of a knife that I would choose over this one yeah that's right there's a lot of really good options out there I would get this one first and then I'd say I want some other ones because there's a lot of really good stuff out there but for four hundred dollars I would choose this knife over most I it's just it's insane as many people have said, it does feel like a custom. And it looks a lot like a custom too. The quality, the materials, the brilliance and, and the subtlety of its design is just so clean. The lines are nice. It's just beautiful. The detent is really, as you can see, it doesn't just fall right out. So it's, it's, it's in there but it's easy to flip out and the action is very smooth. The Garza action is actually smoother. Uh, I was just blown away by <laughs> how gorgeous the action is on the Garza. I really don't know many knives that feel as perfect in their action as this knife. And I'm talking name a knife. At any, at any price point, I've, I've handled you know, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollar knives I've never felt one that feels better than that action. Just haven't. It's just so smooth. And I think they both use single row bearings. Maybe that's double. I don't know. But I don't know what it is. This still feels silky smooth. Don't get me wrong. The action's gorgeous on this. And I don't know if it's just like the weight of the blade is different. So it doesn't, you know, just drop on itself as easier. It's still really smooth. But something about the Garza, the overall build, you know, maybe it's even the stop pin and the way everything connects and sounds and feels when it closes. It's almost this deadened, muted, like closing a Bentley car door for a knife. It's just hard to explain. It's just gorgeous. But this amazing action, don't get me wrong, very, very smooth. Of course, with all of these knives, there's never been any blade play. Very solid lockup. No, no wiggle, no nothing. It's just solid. Fixed blade solid. So, I really, again, love how Custom Knife Factory, uh, when they collaborate with these designers, they don't zero tolerance the shit out of it and make it a billboard. Even their logo for Custom Knife Factory is simplistic. It's clean. It looks good. Then they just have the little marking there to indicate that it's S35VN. And have this beautiful satin rub finish. And then a completely sterile side with nothing on it. And nothing on the spine here either. So it's very clean, beautiful design. Not a ton of hardware. You know, they have the pivot pin 
and a couple screws here just to hold the carbon fiber on. So beautiful design. And I really can't get over, because it is a little bit thicker. You know, I mean, <clears throat> let me get the calipers out. It's a little bit thicker, um, nothing ridiculous. It's not overly robust like, oh, I don't know, this one, <laughs> the Decepticon. Pretty much the most badass looking knife around, in my opinion, or one of them. It's not that thick. But it's a little thicker than a lot of other offerings out there. So let's just see how thick this, this beast is. What do we got here? Point seven one six. Okay. And what do we got here? Probably at its fattest up here. 0.664. And that's at its fattest. And it tapers down, which I just noticed, 0.6. Let's just say 0.6. So that's a that's a decent taper. It's not like a it's kind of like Will Moon. Um Will Moon's tapers a little bit more, I believe. Um but yeah, the you know I think that's one brilliant design that Will Moon did. That's one thing about his design that's so brilliant. It makes it comfortable to carry, even though it's a larger knife. They kind of emulated that here as well. And I, I honestly just realized that uh, it is broader up here. And the MK6 that I have from Will Moon, which is gorgeous, it it's much thicker up top. And one thing that he does see these scales are the same thickness all the way down. Um, he just, uh, these guys just tapered the carbon fiber, so it was a little thicker up here and tapered down. His are tapered at the same ratio um, in all the materials, so the actual handle scale, the titanium, whatever he has going on will be thicker up here and, and tapers down in itself all the way down to the bottom. So that's actually even more impressive, but just the fact that they thought to do that here that definitely attributes to how comfortable it is in the pocket for such a large knife. And again, 5.4 ounces <clears throat> for a blade of this, for a knife of this size is definitely not ridiculous. That's very acceptable. Uh, they, it's just very smooth. I love how the knife folds into itself. I love knives like that where, and you see that again here, where the blade is pretty much all immersed. I mean, yes, you have some exposure here, but overall, it's a slim form factor. It it falls right into to itself, and and you've definitely seen that again here. I really like that. It's kind of the same thing with with this style here. You know, you don't have a big, huge chunk of blade sticking out there like a lot of Spydercos have and some some Kershaws have. So anyway, as a comparison. Um, this is a somewhat larger knife too, but this is definitely longer than the Garza, okay? These may not be as familiar as some other knives out there, so let me get that out of there. Um, again, Decepticon, large knife, really crazy. It is a little bit, mm, it's about the same length. Yeah, it's pretty much the same length as the Decepticon. You know, maybe just a touch, touch longer. Really barely even noticeable. So it's very comparable to the Decepticon, just not near as thick and wide and, and all those different angles. You know, much less overbuilt, if you will. Uh, something more... I guess something that will probably hit home as far as a size comparison. Paramilitary 2. Okay, a little bit modified here. It's my Murica version. That the red, white, and blue, silver, and blue. So, Paramilitary 2 is not a huge knife. It's not a small knife, but it's totally acceptable for everyday carry. And as you can see, this is um, 
significant amount bigger. It's, it doesn't dwarf it, but it, it's bigger. And then you have the zero 0560 by zero tolerance here, <clears throat> which is bigger than the paramilitary two. So there you go. So it's a, it's a pretty long knife. Okay, so in a nutshell, it's a, it's a really, really good option. <clears throat> it's actually a good everyday carry knife, surprisingly enough. I, yeah, again, if you're okay with a knife blade that long, if you're allowed to legally carry a, a knife blade that long, if you care about whether or not that's legal, um, th those are just things to consider. So, really, it's going to be a good collecting, a knife to collect. It's going to be a good EDC knife. And I think that's really, you know, the, the, the philosophy, philosophy behind purchasing this. I don't see it as a tactical folder. I don't see it as, um, you know, like a utility knife or a camping knife or a hunting knife. You know, could it field dress an animal? Sure. Could it, you know, defend your life or take another? Yes, of course. I just, you know, when I say it's not tactical or it's not a, a, a hunting knife, it's just the overall design. It's not purpose-driven purpose, purpose driven or, or designed for those purposes. So, you know, you don't have enough traction. It's just not the right type of design for those types of uses, although you could put it into that use if you needed to. Just, I always have to, I feel like I gotta state that because you know, it's kind of misleading when I say, oh, this is not a tactical knife, or this is not a hunting knife. Doesn't mean you can't use it for that. It's just clearly not designed for those sorts of uh, uses. You know, there's going to be better options for those uh, types of, of knives out there. So anyway, I hope you like this review. I hope you see the beauty in this knife that I see. And uh, if, if you, we're on the fence about buying it and some become available. I think there's a couple local retailers online that you can pre-order these right now. Well worth the money. Okay. Now, I also th thought that this was well worth the money. And I think that's a lot more debatable. <laughs> Definitely. But I don't go back on that. I have no regrets. I'm super happy that I have this in my collection. This thing's amazing. But this here still very happy with it i think it's a beautiful knife okay but it, it's at the same price point as the sequoia and i think that's something that for me it doesn't make sense i think they're both great knives i think that it's this is a steal at 400 dollars the sequoia this one that 390 400 same price point the garza I just have a little bit harder time feeling like I'm just, you know, making out, you know, I'm, I'm getting an amazing deal or value um, at that price point. I think it's probably justifiable. I just don't feel like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's only $390. With the Sequoia, that's exactly how I feel. With the Sequoia, honestly, I could easily see, see it being priced at $650. Easily. And I, I wouldn't bat an eye, but yeah, it's totally worth it. I might even, you know, think maybe $700, $800. Like, okay, yeah, I don't know if I'd want to spend that kind of money on that knife. There's so many other options out there for some crazy high-end customs. But honestly, I could understand it. I just don't feel that same way about $400 for, for the Garza. I think maybe $350, $300, probably closer to $300. Uh, it's still beautiful. The action's amazing. You know, I really love the design and lines on it. I just don't think it's as, you know, knock you off your, you know, your feet. Just amazing um, and creative and, and, and all those things that the Sequoia um, demonstrates. So that's just my take on it. I think that the Sequoia is an amazing value is basically what I'm saying. I think the Garza is really, really nice and... Um, probably worth the money you'd spend on it, but I think you're really making out like a bandit 
uh, if you if you actually picked up one of the sequoias. So again, thanks for watching. I uh, appreciate any feedback you may have. If you haven't subscribed, please do like it, share it, and uh, take care.